Now, as we've seen in this course, artificial intelligence is having a significant impact on education and a large amount of research is being done into how to best utilize various new technologies and artificially intelligent enabling technologies into education. So there's a range of strategies that I've provided you and different ways in which AI can support learning. Previously, we've looked at how AI can support teaching and how AI can support assessment. But now we're focusing a little bit more around the learning process itself and, and essentially how AI can support students and the different approaches that we can use with artificial intelligence to support students learning. So there's a whole list of um, approaches and you can read through those and if you've got any questions about them, we'll explore them in the tutorial. But there's also specific to computer education, some artificial intelligence applications that have been emerging and are now um, significant in computer education. And that's particularly around use of AI tools to generate code. Um, this has been happening for a while and we've seen human-based aspects of this where we've had online repositories and uh, communities where students could go and talk about their code and receive advice. So now we have a more technological aspect to that, but it does speed up the process and highlights it a little bit more in teachers' minds. So how do we go about as teachers um, teaching coding in an environment where students can gain significant assistance by AI tools in developing their code. There's no easy answers. Um, it's an area that's still in exploration, as we call it. But there are certainly approaches that we can sort of suggest it is going to go. Much as writing will be done with an AI assistant, just as spelling and grammar checking has been done with AI assistants for many years now, the entire writing process will be done with an AI assistant, essentially like a ghostwriter or a, a very proficient uh, personal assistant, um, helping us with our writing. And the same will occur with coding. Now, this means that we can expect more of our students, but we also need to focus less on the mechanics of coding, uh, getting the syntax correct and the structure correct, because the AI tools will do that very effectively. And we need to focus much more on the creative elements those elements that the AI tools are not so effective with at the moment. Students being able to link their code with other concepts um, to build out more complex coding solutions and so forth. So again, as I said, we're not quite sure how that's all going to play out in terms of the curriculum requirements at this stage. Um, of course, it, the curriculum has tended to focus more on the lower end, uh, more mechanical aspects of coding, but it's certainly an area that is currently under research and you should be trying throughout your careers to keep up to date with what the latest trends and practices are around the use of these technologies in the teaching of computer education. So in particular, I've given you um, sort of some suggestions around two popular tools that students are using, particularly senior students, um, less so for students in um, lower secondary, but GitHub has been very popular. Um, initially as a collaboration tool, which was essentially what it was set up as, but more and more it's become a coding repository and increasingly it's become a tool where coding can be developed. And they're now incorporating AI generative tools into GitHub. So it will be much more of a generative tool rather than simply a management tool. More explicitly around generative coding, there is Google's um, Repit Ghostwriter um, platform. So this is set up to assist with coding. And um, again, it's a tool that students will be using. And you need to be aware of that and to take that into consideration in how you uh, conduct your lessons. Uh, you can incorporate that into your teaching practice assuming, of course, your school hasn't blocked those um, sites. 
but you still need to make some allowances for the fact that students will be incorporating their use of these tools in their own practice at home. So there'll be a lot more of these tools coming um, available. And again, it's a space that is in flux at the moment. That's an area that's certainly under current investigation and research. And we'll discuss more about it in the tutorial.